Hi. I'm Mark Holmes. Yeah, first time I met JR, I was uh, I'd, uh, come back from Colorado. It was 1970. Uh, I was looking around for a teacher, and I went to Kurt and Sandy Landon's house. And I was sitting in this group, maybe 30 people. I was sitting on the floor, and this guy walks in, starts talking to a bunch of people, and kind of clean cut. And he walks up toward the front and sits in the in the chair up on the dais. And I, inside of me, I'm going, No, 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 don't sit there. That's for that's for this guy, John Roger. And then he calls in the light, and I find out that was John Roger. <laughs> so it was, it, I was obviously expecting someone with, it was 1970, somebody with, somebody, somebody with more flowing robes or, or just a, a different continence. But uh, the, the thing that he talked about that seminar was calling in the light, using the light. So uh, that summer, I sailed to San Francisco with my mom and dad on a, on a sailboat. And we had fog the whole way from Rena Del Rey up to San Francisco. And opposite Half Moon Bay, we were in danger of, of uh, running aground. And we were running north in the sh southbound shipping lanes, and we could have gotten run over. So I said to my dad, I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this thing that I just learned this summer. I'm going to call on the light. So I went up to the foredeck and called in the light, and the fog parted, and my dad was able to get a bearing with the compass. Uh, and I was amazed, they were amazed, and it happened two other times during the trip. So I came back uh, after the summer break, and, and when we were doing sharing, I said, uh, oh, I know about the light, I know when to call in the light. And of course, I was thinking, well, you just called in for the big things. And then after a while, I learned, no, you use the light all the time. So. That was uh, June of 1970. <sighs> you know, I mean, it's just more over the years. Every time I really was, <laughs> hey, I feel that. Uh, uh, every time I was in real need, Jerry was there. I'd I'd be studying uh, Oriental medicine in Taiwan and Hong Kong and. I'd get these discourses in the mail. They would be just perfect for what I needed. Uh, you know, the initiations, the subsequent things, being at seminars. So it, 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 was, it, it just went on for years and years and years and still goes on. Uh, I mean, and, and the thing that is so impressive to me about JR, apart from the organization, uh, he, cares, he cares about me. I remember we were, we were in India at Sai Baba's and, and uh, the men's room, the men's quarters was just a zoo. Somewhere, somewhere in, in uh, like August of 1972, I heard through the grapevine that uh, we could go with JR to India. So I went, great. So I sold the truck to get some money and I was in India two weeks later. And uh, we went up to Puta Party where, where Sai Baba was. And, uh, the, the, uh, this, this, to me, this is interesting that when, when we got there, JR saw Sai Baba up on a, on a, on a second story balcony and they made eye contact and JR said, okay, I can go. So that was all that was needed. And he had told us about six months before the movement was going to be known around the world. And he said that was what was needed to make the movement known around the world. And so, so, so that night we were up on the top of the men's quarters because there was 30,000 people at the ashram. And uh, we were all hanging string to put some tarping up so we wouldn't get rained on. And JR gave me some string and said, here, take this much. And it was just exactly the amount I needed to string what I needed for me and the person I was with at the time uh, up there. And I thought, this is amazing, you know, even down to the level of, hey, I care that you don't get rained on. And he gives me the perfect piece of string. Yeah. And the staff was all in a huff. And JR was, well, I was standing there and uh, JR, uh, Sai Baba walked by us and didn't, didn't stop or say hi or anything. And we had had 
been accepted to have private interviews with Baba. And uh, so the staff got all upset and JR was fine. He was like, whatever, because his work was done. The staff said, I, we want to stay longer. So I don't think JR was invested. He stayed for the staff guys. And uh, I used to leave work early. I worked for myself. I would leave work early and uh, be in, you know, like sixth or seventh in line. Craig Rand was always the front one to get a place for Lee. And, uh, you know, I'd go in, sit on the floor, and we'd be at JR's feet while he would do the seminar. And, uh, I mean, it, you know what, the, the more I gave, I, I remember he, he said in 70, the beginning of 72, he said, we're now a church and you guys can become ministers and, and we can, you can be initiates. And I, I didn't know what that was going to be like. No one could tell me. And the more I would give up to the spirit and give up to what MSIA presented, the more free I got inside. And that's, that's been true all along. And, um, you know, I don't, I don't particularly have a, a niche. I did Baraka uh, at, at, the, at the highest. We had uh, a staff of 32. Back in 1977, uh, we started Baraka Holistic Center in a, in a facility in West Los Angeles and JR uh, was the spiritual head of it. And we started seeing patients. There were psychologists, uh, cardiologists, acupuncture, massage, nutrition. Uh, and then when uh, MSA bought the 2101 building, uh, we moved in there and took the whole bottom floor. Uh, we had 7,000 square feet. Insight was upstairs. And a uh, huge facility. And um, for me, as a as a doctor, seeing patients, I mean, I, I feel it in feel it intensely in in my spirit when I have somebody in front of me that I want to do the very best, and so I'll obviously call on the light, and to have Jr. pumping energy into uh, the facility, the treatments, um, you know, it worked. Well, Lee Baumel uh, was the guy who had the idea, went to, to JR, and JR said, sure, let's do it. So um, we were under the aegis. It, it, we, we were separate financially and legally from MSIA, but it was under the spiritual aegis of JR. And he would come down, get treatments. He'd walk through. Uh, energy would always lift. Uh, he'd, he'd talk to the presidency. We had a... Uh, three presidents at one point, and he would he would counsel us about what to do, and uh, it was great because Insight was upstairs, we were downstairs, and and uh, I'll tell you one thing that happened: there was a woman who was working at uh, Cedar Sinai. She got diagnosed with lung cancer. She came to see me for some treatments. She saw somebody else from, for some psycho psychological treatments. She took Insight. Four months later, she got the diagnosis was no cancer and they said it was a misdiagnosis but you know why was it a misdiagnosis they diagnosed it so baraka started in 1977 jr finally did two baraka tapes i think it was 1981-82 where he talked about health and that's where the health uh book that paul k put together the original information came from and, uh, you know, it, it can be amorphous when you say, well, love yourself or do SEs and that's going to that's gonna lift, but uh, it does. I remember doing at Baraka um, the meditation workshops, and as we were doing the Nye Hughes, the light would go up like this and go into the center of the room, come back down, and then lift everybody. And I asked JR about it, and he said, oh, yeah, sure, like old hat. But for me, it was new. But, uh, you know, the, the, the cleaning out of, of the, it's always management from the top down. You know, we have a body, we have consciousness, but we're a soul with a body. So when we apply those things that JR has taught us, you know, through Insight, through Baraka, through MSIA, 
and we apply those, then the lifting is there and people get well. Uh, Pat training, 1985. Uh, my goal was to experience the Christ. And uh, I did uh, at uh, the Sea of Galilee, actually twice. When I was doing SEs, Christ came forward and uh, didn't give me an anointing, but I experienced the Christ. Um, you know, the, the thing about J having JR on these trips, besides all of us initiates assisting him and doing what he's doing, um, you know, he teaches us, well, bring that spirit forward. And yeah, we're at the garden of the gar the uh, to the garden of the tomb. Said, okay, Jesus may have been here, and he may not have been here. But if you have an experience, then put that into your heart and take it with you. And so, uh, for me, it was it was always having having him as the teacher. Have, there's always there's the ultimate trust because I've got him on the outside and I've got him on the inside, and they match up. So that puts me in a good position in terms of my own spiritual awareness. In 1973, uh, we used to go up there and do Dharma yoga, uh, and then JR would give seminars at night. There was one seminar where JR started talking, and the room just broke up in tears. And I experienced the purple light coming down from on high, and then being able to go up with that and just people were cathartic in the room. Uh, the uh, uh, Lake Arrowhead property, uh, they were, there was a, a troll in the ravine as we would come down from the upper drive to walk down to the, to the guest house and then to the, uh, to, the, to the kitchen. And JR you know, would tell us, you know, don't walk in there, don't irritate the guy. And so, Arrowhead property was beautiful though. I mean, you'd come out of a seminar and walk up the hill in the middle of the night with your flashlight and lay down under the stars and, and uh, in a tent and, you know, do a couple of SEs and fall asleep. And I mean, it was, it was wonderful. The, the, the camaraderie of, of all of us working, cutting down trees, digging trenches, fixing up the, the garage, laying carpet, you know, eating, you know, laughing at each other. Uh, I mean, you know, it, it, it is a family. We used to lay on the ground at, uh, at the, in the uh, garage area because there weren't enough chairs. We used to, uh, Tell the story about the troll again. Yeah, okay. Uh, Jared warned us that there was a troll in the ravine that was just below where you could, the highest po point where you could pull a car up to unload. And so uh, we would, well, of course, avoid that area. And he would walk around the property and say, put the, put the path in here, the path in there, the path in here, uh, to walk up and down the property. Um, and I remember one, one thing, we, we created a volleyball court and he gave the, the idea of the Michelangelo. He said, you know, here's, here was nothing. I took away everything that wasn't the volleyball court. And now here's the volleyball court. Were so, you there when Sarah fell? I was, I was, yeah. Let's talk about that. Oh, oh, I mean, just you, when, when, when Sarah just let go of the rope, uh, God, in, in the pit of your one stomach, everybody just went, oh. So I was one of the people that ran down to a sister, and then the ambulance came. But uh, she recovered really quickly. I think it was, she was back at Prana, like six weeks later, still laying down. They carried her in, but she was there beaming, you know, for a seminar. And it was, it was, in terms of recovery, that was recovery, you know. So is there anything you want to talk about that you didn't get to say? Um, it, 
it, it's hard to to put a finger on one's spiritual growth, spiritual awareness, but th that MSI logo with the circle that keeps expanding, and you know, as we go through something on on a astral level, and then a causal, and then a mental, and then a spiritual, and we keep expanding. Uh, that's been true for me, and now this is literally 43 years later, and I am where I had hoped I would have been when I first started. So, you know, when you when you embark on a path, maybe it takes five years till you know if it's going to yield any results. And I think I could have gone further and faster if I had opened myself up to the teachings. But uh, you know, I, I haven't I haven't found any falsity in what JR has presented in in the multitudes of stuff. So. And I always said to myself, if I found something better, I'd go off and do that. And here I am. So it's not that I'm locked in, I'm not crystallized in it, I'm just open and I'm, I'm growing and loving and, and uh, you know, I feel this too. J.R. used to write, um, you and I are one. And in the last six months, I'm, I, I realize that, that we are one. And then he says, it's only, there's only one God, there's only one Christ, there's only one energy, there's only one person, you're all one big soul. And, and to, to, to live that is, is worth any, any tra travail, any trauma. Yeah. Uh, JR, um, we're one. And I love you. And always will. Very grateful. I'm a, I'm a grateful initiate, JR. God bless. Lots of love.